Stanford University. Okay, well, welcome to lecture 16 of Stanford CS 193P, Fall 2013-14. So today we are going to talk about the last of the segues, which is modal segues and their um, kind of related segue, which is unwinding segues. Okay, these can be a little, modal segue is really easy, the unwinding, you know, can be a little confusing. And uh, so hopefully both the combination of the slides and the demo will get you there. But it's an important one to understand, these unwinding segues. Uh, also, briefly, we're going to talk about text fields, uh, which we haven't covered yet, and also alerts and action sheets. And then I'm going to do this demo. It says camera time permitting, but we will definitely not have time for that. That's what we'll start off on Wednesday with. All right. All right, modal view controllers. Okay, so this is another way to segue, another way to put a view controller on screen. Uh, you already know about popovers and you know about push segues in your navigation controller. Um, so this is another way called modal view controllers. And a modal view controller is a way of putting a view controller on screen where it takes over the entire screen. Okay, for the lifetime of that view controller being on screen, it's in charge of the entire screen. Okay. Um, on the iPhone, it takes over the entire screen by covering the entire screen. On the iPad, it usually takes over by being in a popover. And as we know, popovers are essentially modal. They're in a mode. When your popover comes up, everything else is kind of dark gray. And if you click on anything else, the popover goes away, right? So it's essentially taking over as well. Um, so modal view controllers are a way to put things up um, on screen that takes over. So let's look at the iPhone uh, version of this. Here's a little demo of it. So this is the Contacts app, and you can see I've got my contacts there, my winning contacts. And so what if I want to add another contact here? Uh, let's say I want to add Monte Ball or something like that. How would I do that? Well, I would press that little plus up there in the corner. And what would happen when I press plus? So let's watch. So I hit pr plus and a whole new view controller slides in and completely takes over the screen. Now this was not a push, okay, that cancel button there, that's not a back button, okay, it's actually took over the whole screen. Now cancel happens to be in the same place the back would be, um, which is kind of decent uh, UI consistency there, but uh, it's a different, totally different modal mechanism, okay. So, uh, it not only, so we have this modal view controller that's taken over the screen and for example there's another button on this one, add photo, which uses another modal view controller and covers this guy's screen. So let's watch what happens when we hit add photo. See, that covers up the whole screen again. So now I have two levels of modal uh, segues happening here. And again, it's not a push, there's no back button. In this one the cancel button happens to be uh, on the right. And I don't have any photos or videos to choose uh, here on this device that I'm running on, but you can see no back button there. Um, now, when I cancel, okay, and this modal view controller goes away, watch what happens. It disappears. I go back to the previous modal, obviously. And then if I cancel this modal, okay, then I'll go back to the previous one from that. So modal takes over the screen until it's, you hit either done or cancel or something, and then it goes away and goes back to where you were, exactly where you were, okay? So it's pretty straightforward, but just want to make sure you understand what we're doing here with modal view controllers, okay? Now, um, some things to think about. Modal segues can be a little disorienting to the user because they're in their nice app, they're really comfy, and then all of a sudden their whole screen is completely taken over by something else. And like, whoa, what's this? Now, you know, if you're using modal view controllers in the proper places, it's okay. The user's fine with that. Like the contacts, they're adding a new contact. They understand, okay, well, I have to completely specify this contact before I say done, so I kind of can't do anything else anyway until I'm done. But modal view controllers can be overused. I see students overusing it a lot. They're just kind of like, oh, well, I need to put this view control on the screen, so I'll just put it up modally, okay? And to, whereas it might be better to push it on the screen if, it's, if going back, makes sense at all times, okay? If you push something and it doesn't make sense to go back at all times, then push is probably not right, okay? But then you might ask yourself, can I design my UI so it is always okay to go back, right, in a, in a navigation controller? So modal view controllers tend to get overused. Users can sometimes be disoriented by them, so use them with care. Um, how do we set a modal segue up? Super simple, got our storyboard, have the view controller you want a modal segue to, we just control drag. 
Okay, control DAG, and when it says what kind of segue you want, you say modal instead of push, for example. And bam, that's all that's necessary to set it up. And it's a normal segue, so you're going to prepare for segue just like any other uh, segue. It's very, when it comes to pushing it, or you know, not pushing it, putting it on screen, it's very much like pushing. So it, it's very, you're, you'll be very used to that. Um, it can be manually segued too, just like we talked about last week. Um, you can even put them up by creating view controllers and put them on screen, but we don't really talk about that uh, in this class because that's really old style way of doing things. We do things in storyboards and we control drag to set up segues. Um, so it's normal to prepare. What does a prepare look, look like? It looks like any other prepare for segue, right? You get the destination controller. Uh, maybe you check the identifier. You see what class it is. You know, you set up your best, your you prepare by passing whatever public API that view controller wants. Okay, now here's where modal segues get interesting though. That's hearing back, okay? So a modal segue has gone off and done something like created a new contact in your contacts app, and now the contacts app, you know, the view controller that put it up wants to hear back. Okay, well what was that con contact you just created? Okay, so this hearing back is kind of the interesting yet another kind of segue, okay? This hearing back, we call these unwind segues, okay? An unwind segue means you're going back to someone who put you up, someone who put you on screen. We call a view controller that puts another view controller on screen a presenting view controller because it's presenting this other view controller, okay? So an unwind segue, you're going back to someone who presented to you. Unwind segues, can only go back to someone who presented you. You can't unwind to someone else who didn't pre present you. But in the case where we had modal and then that modal brought up another modal, you can unwind two levels at once. Okay, so you can unwind to anybody who presented you either directly or indirectly. The most interesting thing, interesting thing about unwind segues, they're the only kind of segue that doesn't create a new view controller. Okay, every other segue, pushing, modal, replace, all these segues always create a new view controller. They instantiate one from scratch every time. Okay, every time you push in your navigation controller, you get a new view controller. Every time you modally segue, you get a new one. Unwinds obviously don't do that because they're unwinding back to someone who presented you. They obviously already exist. Does that make sense? See what I'm saying? So it's kind of an unwind, it's kind of a weird segue in that way. It always goes back to somebody who already uh, exists. Um, normally this unwinding is used with modal. Um, it actually can be used with pushing though. You could push and push and push and then unwind all the way back up to the top. Okay, so unwinding can be used inside navigation controller, but most often probably used in modal view controller. Okay, so let's talk about unwinding and how we set that up and how we make it work. Um, because it's a little, again, like I say, it's a little disorienting because uh, it's graphically not shown in the storyboard in the same way as other segues, okay? There's not the line being drawn. But the way you set it up, the most important thing about an unwind segue is to specify the action method that's going to get called in the presenting view controller, the one that's presenting these guys. Some method has to be called in them when you unwind. Okay, that kind of method, it's an IB action, right? It's, it's kind of thing that Xcode is pay special attention to. So it looks kind of like a target action method, but the argument is very important to get right. It's a UI storyboard segue. Okay, that's because when this unwind happens, this method's gonna get called and it's going to pass you the unwind segue, okay? The segue itself that is happening is going to be passed to you. And when you look in that segue, you can, for example, find out who's the source of this unwind. That's going to be the thing you presented, or the thing that you presented that somebody else presented or presented down the way. Um, that's going to be the source view controller. So this is the only case where we've looked at the segue's source view controller. Usually we're looking at the segue's destination. But in this case, to unwind segue, the destination is receiving this message, so it knows who it is, and so it's looking at the source. Okay, so obviously the first line in a segue uh, method like this is usually who's un who am I unwinding from, okay? Now that you know who you're unwinding from, you could ask that thing, like the contact, the add contact view controller, what was the contact you added, okay? You just unwound to me, obviously you chose your contact, what was the contact you added? So now you've got the contact, you could add it to the list of contacts or whatever you want to do, okay? So creating that method, is the most important thing to do, and just the very creation of that method will automatically make Xcode realize that you can unwind to that view controller. 
If a view controller has this kind of method, IB action, any name, takes a UI storyboard segue, that view controller can now be unwound to. Okay, so any view controller that that view controller presents can unwind back to it. Okay, so how do you set up that unwind? Okay, this is a little odd. In the, let's say, add contact view controller, the one that's being presented modally, it might have a button in there like done or save new contact or create new contact. That button, okay, really wants to start this unwind segue. But you can't control drag from that button all the way back to the other view controller that has this method. You'd think you could, but you can't. Instead, you control drag from that button down to the little green button. You see the image I have there? The little green button at the bottom of the view controller that is starting the unwind segue. Okay, the thing that was presented modally. So you go down to that green thing, and when you do to that green thing and you let go, it's going to give you a list of all these methods like done right there. Okay, all the methods that are IB actions that take UI storyboard segues as arguments. Now, some of those methods might be in completely unrelated view controllers off somewhere else in your storyboard, because it's going to show you all of them. Xcode knows about all of them, it shows you all of them. If you pick one that you wasn't, is not in a view controller that presented you, the unwind just will not happen. It's like you did nothing. It's not going to crash, but it's just not going to do anything. So the done button would just do nothing. Okay? But if it can find, at runtime, if it can find that method up the change of, chain of who presented you, it will call that method. Okay? Now, that's only part of unwinding. Part of the unwinding is letting the view controller who presented you know, yeah, I'm done. Okay? Uh, and here's from public API in myself so you can get information out of me. But there's another part of it, which is preparing that unwind segue. So the unwind segue has to be prepared as well. And in fact, preparing an unwind segue is even more important sometimes than preparing other segues because it's the only chance that the presented modal view controller has to do anything before it goes away. Okay? And that's to prepare that unwind segue to go back. So in the demo, we're going to do a photo, some more photomania and we're going to add a photo. We're going to allow us to take a photo with the camera instead of getting it from Flickr. And when that modal view controller that lets you add that photo is done, it has to put that photo in the database before it unwinds. So it prepares for the segue back when it's done by putting that photo in the database. Okay? So preparing for unwind segues is very important. Now, the thing about preparing for segues is you, when you do the prepare for segue, you need the segues identifier. Because you've got to know which unwind segue am I talking about. And that is also difficult with unwind segues. The only place to set that is in the document outline. Okay, so when you create an unwind segue by control dragging down to the little green thing, in the document outline, there'll be a little line in there, unwind segue, you know, from the whatever button. And you can click on that and then inspect it, just like any other segue, and say the identifier is whatever. And then in prepare for segue, you'll have the identifier. Why is that different or a little hidden? Well, because unwind segues don't have a, you know, a drawing on the storyboard that says where they go. Because they don't really know where they go. It depends on who presented them as to where they unwind to. So there's no line showing them going back. So that's why you have to use the document outline. Okay? So I'm going to demo all this. So hopefully it'll all make sense once you see it. Um, how about dismissing modal view controllers from code. So you just want to get it off the screen. You're not going to unwind. You just want to get it off the screen. Um, by the way, unwinding automatically takes it off the screen. If you have a modal view controller and you unwind, it will automatically be removed from the screen. You do not have to dismiss it. But you can also dismiss them manually by sending the message dismiss view controller animated. This method is sent to the presenting view controller, not the presented, the presenting. Okay. You say to a view controller, dismiss view controller animated, it means dismiss any view controller that you have presented. Okay? And luckily, though, if you want to kind of say that in the actual view controller, there's a nice method in UI view controller called presenting view controller, which will tell you who presented you if anyone presented you. So that's a, you can dismiss yourself basically by saying self.presenting view controller, dismiss animated. And since by definition, that guy presented you, when you dismiss, it's going to dismiss you. Okay? So this is a little frowned upon because 
Some people would argue that when a view controller or modal view controller gets canceled, you want to unwind. Even if you're not communicating anything back, you just want to let the guy know, yeah, I got canceled. If you just cancel yourself by dismissing yourself, then the guy who presented you doesn't get notified that you uh, submitted yourself. But some people say, yeah, but if I'm canceling, I don't want that guy to know that I'm, I didn't do anything. I didn't add the contact in the contact case. So I don't even want him to know. So I'm just going to dismiss myself. So it's kind of an art of programming as to which you believe is the right thing there. It's usually not an issue because in your storyboard, uh, you're wiring it up anyway. So you could always wire it up as an unwind, that cancel button, instead of having the cancel button do target action and dismiss itself. Okay? You can always just disconnect any target action that might be set up. Um, OK, uh, how does the modal view controller appear on screen? Uh, that's set by this modal transition style property in the presented view controller. And it has various choices here, like cover vertical is slide up from the bottom, like I showed in the demo there. There's also flip horizontal, which will flip the new one in horizontally. There's also cross dissolve, right, which kind of fades the new one in. And partial curl, which will curl up the current one and show the new one underneath. That one's kind of a weird one. Um, so you want to check the documentation if you want to use that curl. It puts some limitations on you. Once you curl it, you can't go modal again, for example. You can't present another one. Also, the one that curls up doesn't get view did disappear because it doesn't disappear. It kind of just cur curls up. You can't really see it behind the curl, but it's still on screen. So that's a little weird programming wise. Okay, normally a modal thing comes up and the one behind it gets completely covered so it gets view did disappear because it's view did disappear. It was completely obscured by the modal one. But with the curl, not so much. So be careful with curl. Now what about all this business on the iPad? Okay, so on the iPad again, mostly we're going to try and do popovers for this kind of stuff instead of modal view controllers. But you can do modal view controllers, and you can even have a modal view controller that controls, covers the whole screen. And you just determine how it works, how it covers, using this modal presentation style property. It's a different property. And one of the options is full screen, not recommended on the iPad. Uh, there's page sheet and form sheet, which are just different size uh, versions of the thing on the iPad. The rest of the iPad screen will be dark gray, you know, kind of grayed out like a popover's background is. And then it'll show up one's portrait size and one's a little smaller. Um, and then the current context is an interesting one. If you have a popover, if you have a view controller and a popover, and that view controller does a modal, then if it's current context, which is the default, it'll appear inside the popover. So it'll be modal inside the popover. You see what I mean? So it's going to keep the same context as the view controller that presented it. Okay, So anyway, you can look all this up for details. It's all settable in Xcode as well, these two uh, properties. All right, so that's it for modal view controllers. I'm going to demo it, so um, you'll, you'll see it all in action. All right, different topic, UI text field. So we've seen UI text view and UI label. Okay, These are kind of two ends of the spectrum of text, UI label, non-editable. Uh, you, you, know, you can have attributed text in there, but it's static text can't select it or anything like that, usually one line of text. Then you got UI text view, which is almost like a text editor, okay? Fully editable, all fonts and colors, everything we want. So UI text field is kind of in between those two, okay? It's a UI control, like a UI button or something like that, that you can um, set up target action from. And that target action can happen when you're done editing the text or other things that are happening in the text, and you can just, when you control drag to do it, you'll see the options you have in the little um, target action window that comes up. Uh, but it's also usually just one line of text. It's not like UI text view that has tons of things. Also, the user is usually just providing the text. They're not doing any colors or any of that attributed text business. Generally, UI text field is just the text and nothing but the text, OK? Um, having said that, it's got a lot of features to make it really cool for doing things like entering passwords or having a search field, all those kind of things. So it's a pretty powerful little class. But it's kind of like an editable UI label, if you want to think of it uh, that way. One thing that's interesting about a UI text field, of course, is that when you click in it, the keyboard appears. Now, we didn't really talk about how this keyboard appears when we talked about UI text view. But how does that work, that the keyboard appears? And the answer is, there's a method called become first responder that is sent, that if you send it to a text field or get sent to a text field, will cause the keyboard to appear. So this is a method you send to the text field. You can also send it to a text view. And when you do that, the keyboard will appear. And similarly, if you want the keyboard to go away, you send a message to the text field, resign first responder. 
The first responder means where do keyboard presses on the keyboard go? Okay, so if you say become first responder, the text field becomes the first responder and the keyboard will appear and key presses will go to that text field. And similar or resign, it'll go away. Okay, um, there's a delegate for UI text field unlike UI label and there's a lot of stuff you can see there. I'll show you a brief example in the demo. Uh, for example, when the keyboard presses the return key, okay, when the return key is pressed and that text field is being added, the text field's delegate will send this message, text field should return returns yes or no, whether it should send its target action, basically. Um, and in there, you can do things like resign first responder. So when the keyboard comes up, someone hits return, you can make the keyboard go away, which is usually what users expect. So we'll see that in the demo as well. But there are other delegate methods. I just want to give you an example of one of them there. There's probably about 10 of them. You can check out the documentation on that. Um, oh, here's another one. Text field did end editing. That's sent to the delegate when uh, it resigns first responder. Okay, so when it stops being first responder, this message gets sent. Uh, it also has a radio station that it broadcasts on every single keystroke. Okay, so if you want to find out every single character that's typed in your text field, you can sign up to listen to this radio station and uh, you'll find out uh, what's going on. And uh, like I said, UI text field is a control so you can set up target action as well. So there's a lot of ways to find out what's going on in a text field depending on the granularity that you want. Um, the keyboard, the we don't, there's really no uh, property like give me the keyboard so that I can set properties on it. Okay, when you want to control the appearance of this keyboard, you have to send messages to the class, UI text field or UI text view, that brings the keyboard up. Okay, and those objects, those classes, will all implement this uh, pro protocol called UI text input traits. So this is a set of properties that you can set on a text field or on a text view that aren't really controlling anything about the text view or the text field. They're controlling the properties of the keyboard that they would bring up. All right. So what are some of the properties you can have? Like auto capitalization. Sometimes it's nice you have a text field. The first character you type, you want it to be capitalized. Or every word you type, separate word, you want to be capitalized. So you can set the kind of capitalization type that you have. Um, Maybe it's a password. This text field's a password, and so you want it to be the dots when you type them. Okay, so secure text entry will make it so it's the dots. Um, the return key, when the keyboard comes up, it has a little return, okay, and that can have a word on it like search or go, okay, or return. And you can control that with the return key type. So these are all things that you set, properties you set in your UI text field, but you're really controlling uh, the keyboard. One thing about the keyboard, it comes up on top of other views. Okay, it covers them. Comes up from the bottom, covers them. All right, that can be a problem if your text field's at the bottom because you just covered the thing you're typing in. Okay, so A, try to design your UIs so that doesn't happen. But B, you can, for example, if your view is scrollable, maybe scroll that text field up or even just move the whole view up so that while the keyboard's up, you can still see your text field that you're typing into. Okay, and so the way you find out that the keyboard's come up and how much it's covering is by tuning into this radio station UI keyboard will or did show or hide notification. It's uh, a notification sent by the window you're in. Okay, self.view.window for view controller. And the user info that you get with this radio station will tell you the rectangles of where the to keyboard appeared and it's your responsibility to move it out of the way, okay? The only class in the kit, uh, in the uh, UI kit that will move the thing automatically for you is UI table view controller. So if you have a row in a table view uh, that's in a UI table view controller and it's editable text and you bring the keyboard up, it'll automatically scroll the table view to move it. Okay, so that's the only one that automatically does it. Otherwise, it's your responsibility to make, move anything that get, gets obscured by the keyboard. Um, other text field properties, you can go look those up. It has a nice left and right accessor view, kind of like the annotation call out. Um, you can even add a little view to the keyboard with this input accessory view. Um, there's a lot of stuff uh, to look at in text field. I can't, I don't have time to cover it all today, but you can look it all up in UI text field documentation. All right, the last thing I'm going to talk about today before the demo is action sheet and alert. So action and sheet and alert are things that pop up on the screen to alert the user of something, obviously, or to give them kind of a branching decision. Okay, action sheet for branching decisions alerts to alert them of something. 
Um, they have very, the reason I talk about them together, they have very similar APIs and those programming interfaces. Um, they're used in different circumstances though. An alert is more uh, saying something happened, pay attention, or I need a little piece of information, please give it to me right now, or I can't proceed, okay? Uh, in a little, it's a little bit like a modal view controller, except for that it can only you know, ask a simple question and get a simple answer, okay? So that's what an alert is for. Don't overuse alerts either. Just like I say don't overuse modal view controllers, don't overuse alerts, okay? Don't, every time you need a piece of information from the user, just put up an alert and ask them for it. Um, you know, it's nicer for them to be able to just click on something and start typing. Um, take, take a look, for example, at the Contacts app. Even that Contacts app where it brought up the Add Contact in the modal view controller, when it comes to adding things like text or, the, uh, you know, URLs or emails, you just click right there and you just type them in. It doesn't go modal again on you just for that kind of information. So check that out to see how that can be nicely used. Um, action sheets are, they slide up from the bottom on the iPhone. They usually appear in a popover on the iPad. Uh, they are for really branching decisions. So the user wants to do something next, but they, you ne they need to tell you something so you can decide which way to go, okay? Um, so that's what action sh sheets are for. And again, they're modal. They stop everything until the person answers the question of what's in the action sheet. So make sure that's really the UI you want, uh, as opposed to just having you know, buttons in your UI that push different view controllers. That's another way to do branching decisions as well. Um, and we'll see action sheets. I'll be demoing those on Wednesday, okay? Um, all right, what's the API for these two things look like? Very similar. I'll start with action sheets first. Uh, you just alloc init it. Here's the designated initializer for action sheet. You can see that it takes a title. The action sheet has a little title at the top. Um, it has a delegate, okay? The delegate mostly will tell you what was chosen in the action sheet. Or in alert view, it'll tell you which button was chosen. Um, there are some special buttons, a cancel button, okay, which cancels the action sheet without making a decision. Destructive button, that's, you can have one button in your action sheet like that, and that will be like in red or otherwise telling the user, if you choose this, something destructive is gonna happen. This is like delete or something like that, okay? So that's what destructive button is. And then you can have as many other titles as you want. Those are all the other branches you can take besides the destructive one or cancel not doing anything. Um, you can also add buttons programmatically. If you don't want to provide them in the alloc init, you can just call add button with title um, to add them to the action sheet. And then it's time to display the action sheet. And um, you kind of do this depends on where, what context you're in. On the iPhone, you're almost always going to do show in view. Um, some, a lot of times self.view, or if you have a view that's inside your self.view, you could show from that. But it doesn't really matter on the iPhone because it's always going to slide up from the bottom. No matter how you present an action sheet on an iPhone, it's always going to slide up from the bottom. But on the iPad, since it's going to appear in a popover, it makes a lot of sense to, for example, use show from bar button item. And it'll put the popover, and the little arrow on the popover will point at that bar button item. Or even show from rect. So you specify an arbitrary rectangle in your view, and it'll bring the popover up and point to that. So for example, let's imagine you are, have some text, and someone double clicks a word and then they want to define the word or um, uh, copy the word or something like that. I probably wouldn't use it for copy and paste, but uh, do something with that word. And then you might say show from rect and give the rectangle of the word. You see what I mean? So this is like, this is what, you know, iBooks does. You select a word and you say define. It'll make a little popover. That's not an action sheet, but it'll make a little popover. So you can do the same thing with action sheets. Okay, so on the iPad, you're going to use show from rec, show from bar button item. On the iPhone, it almost doesn't matter which one you use, it's going to come up from the bottom. Um, finding out which button is chosen, this is the delegate method you get, did dismiss with button index. It's all done by button index. You can look up which is the cancel button, which is the destructive button, which are the other buttons. You can also get the button title and index and compare it to the one that was chosen. Be a little careful there if you're doing localization because your action sheet might have localized words in it and then you want to see which one is chosen. Make sure you're comparing localized the localized words, right? Or otherwise just use indexes if you want to kind of be more localization independent. Um, you can programmatically dismiss an action sheet and why would you ever want to do this? Okay, you put up an action sheet, a decision branch and thing. Why would you ever want to dismiss it yourself? Well, the main reason is you get put in the background. Okay, so anytime you have an action sheet up and someone clicks the home button to go to another app, you should dismiss that action sheet. Okay, why would you do that? 
Well, because when the user comes back to you, they'll probably be, that could be the next day. <laughs> they might be kind of confused why this action sheet is up. They don't remember why they forced that branching decision. So you're better to go back to the previous step for them and let them choose that branching decision again and make the action sheet come back up. So how do you find out you entered the background? There's this nice radio station UI application did enter background notification. You just listen to that, boom, you'll find out in your, you were put in the background, just dismiss the action sheet. And you know how to do this with blocks, so it's really, really easy one-liner. When you put up the action sheet, you just put a one-liner in there that when it gets to this radio station, just dismisses it, okay? Um, there's special popover considerations. We have the same problem here with popover action sheets that we had when we did Photomania where we kept pressing a URL and we got more and more and more and more and more of them. Okay, same thing here. You have to be careful if your action sheet's already up, don't put it up again, okay? So, um, alert, view, uh, alert view can have multiple buttons like the one on the left. It can also have a little text field in it like the one on the right, which is kind of fun. And its API looks exactly like Action Sheet. Um, you can add buttons uh, programmatically. Showing it is always just the one method, show, because alerts always come up in the middle of the screen. Um, I think I said only table view controllers will move out of the way. Alerts will also move out of the way. If you bring up a keyboard because there's a text field in your alert, the alert will move up, okay? Um, so anyway, show. On either iPad or iPhone, you just do show. Uh, here's how you get a text field in your alert. You just say alert.alertViewStyle equals one of these styles that has text, secure text, plain text, login and password. Um, and then you get the text field, so you can get the text, field, text out of them by alert view text field at index. Okay, index zero if there's only one text field, index zero and one if there's login and password, for example. So that's how you can get text field. All right, time for the demo. So I'm gonna show all of these things in the demo. And like I said, what we're gonna do is we're gonna enhance Photomania so that it can, uh, so the user can take photos with their camera, okay? Now, we're not actually gonna to get to the camera part today, but we're gonna do all the rest of it. Most importantly, we're gonna do that modal uh, segue and unwind segue to put this view controller up that's gonna ask for the photo, okay? It's gonna be a view controller. Its only job is to let the user take a picture with the camera, give it a title and subtitle, find out their location, Okay, I'm gonna go back and show you core location demo here because I never showed you that before. Um, and then now I can create a photo because I've got all the pieces, title, subtitle, image, I'll make a thumbnail, and then the location. Now I can make a photo, put it in the database. Okay, everyone understand what we're gonna do? Okay, let's dive right in here. Um, I'm gonna, let's show coming up because I'm not gonna go back to the slides. I'll continue this demo by doing the actual camera part and then I'm also gonna talk about core motion which is accelerometer, gyro, all that stuff on Wednesday, okay, with another demo. Uh, Friday's um, section is Sprite Kit, which is a new iOS 7 kit for doing 2.5D games. Okay, games that look 3D, but they're really made out of 2D images. Uh, and the next week we have off, and then uh, when we come back, we'll have some more miscellaneous topics. Okay, so Photomania, where is it? Okay, so just before class, I added one thing to Photomania. I'm gonna show you the code I added. What I did was I added a photographer to my database for the user. Okay, this is a photographer, the user, who's using my device, okay? That's because I'm gonna add photos. I'm gonna, he's going to, the user, he or she, is going to be the photographer. So how did I do that? Um, I added these two methods to my photographer, category here, user in managed object context, that gives me uh, a photographer for the user, unique photographer, and then is user, which just tells me whether a particular photographer is the user. And the implementation of these, I kind of went cheapo, probably be much better ways to do this, but I just created a fire photographer with the name My Photos, and I put a space bar at the beginning so it would sort at the beginning, but really the way to do this would be to add another attribute to your photographer, which is, is the user. And then when you sort, you would sort by that first and then secondarily by the name. Um, and that would make it so that this name wouldn't have to be unique because it would be the, you know, that attribute set. And then here I'm just checking to see if the user uh, is self. So that's all the is users, okay? The only other line of code I added to this was I always create this magic user in app delegate when the database context becomes available, okay? That's it, everyone understand what I did so far? I've shown you everything. So let's look what this looks like. 
So here I'm running Photomania, and you can see right here at the beginning, I have a photographer, my photos, and I can click on it. It'll show all my photos. I don't have any yet because we haven't hooked up this whole camera business. Um, but what I'm going to do in this UI is, when I'm looking at my photos, I'm going to add a little button up here, looks like a camera, and it's going to modally present a view controller that lets me take a picture and put it in the database. Okay? Good. All right, so that's what we're going to do. We're just going to add this here. Now, that camera, we don't want that camera button here when we're looking at Night Flyer. Okay, we don't want that Night Flyer to be able to add one, so we're only going to do it uh, when it's my photos. Okay? All right. So how are we going to do that? Let's go look at our view. We're going to do this on the iPhone. Uh, probably not going to get around to doing it on the iPad on Wednesday. We'll just do it iPhone only. Um, here is my list of photographers. Here is that map view with the photos by a given photographer. Here's where I want to have that little uh, map button. So I'm just going to go down here and grab a, oops, grab a bar button item. There's one right here. Put it here. Um, I could say the word uh, camera or take photo or something here, but it actually turns out there's a nice built-in one for camera. Woo, built-in bar button item. Boop, looks good, okay? So again, I only want to have this camera appear when I'm showing the photographer who is the user, okay? So I'm going to put a little bit of code in my map, photos by photographer map view controller, which is the code for that thing to only show that button in that circumstance. So first of all, I'm going to create a little, um, let's go back here, sorry. I'm going to create a little outlet to it. I'm trying to make more space here as I show these. Um, OK, so here is um, this guy right here. And I'm going to go to the .m. So here's my photos by photographer of map view controller. That's this. That's where this is. So I'm going to control drag from this little button right here to make an outlet for it. I'm going to call it the add photo bar button item. Okay. So I got my add photo bar button item. And now I'm just going to put a little bit of code that only puts that here if my current photographer, here's where I set my photographer for this thing, is the user. So I'm going to have a little method here. I'm going to call it self update add photo bar button item and uh, I'm just going to have a little uh, this update this thing um, we need photographer create for that because that's where that thing we just added all right so here's what I just typed in right here really fast and you can look at this offline there's nothing really new to teach you here um, so I'm not going to go through it but suffice it to say it's just updating the right bar button items of this navigation item right here to have this or not. So let's go take a look. Okay, so we go here. It's got this. Go back here. Doesn't have it. You see? Okay, so that's good. So now we need to make it so when we press this, we do this modal segue to a new UI. So let's go do that. Back to our iPhone storyboard. Let's make space. All right, so let's make this new UI that we want to, to do that. So I'm going to create a new view controller here. Drag this out. It's my new view controller. Okay, maybe we'll line it up there nicely. And what is this view controller going to have in it? Well, let's see. I'm going to drag a whole bunch of nice stuff out here. It wants a cancel button. So let's do a cancel. Okay, that's if I decide, and eh, I don't really want to add one after all. It wants a done button. So if we're going to do done, it probably wants a take photo button, okay, that we'll click that will cause us to bring up the camera taking uh, user interface. Uh, we'll put these somewhere here. Let's put that up there. Let's put this one lined up over there. Put this somewhere. Uh, we need a view. I want to have an image view, a UI image view that shows me what I just took with the camera. So let's drag that out. Put that here, let's say. Maybe, I don't know, something like, let's make it square. Yeah, that's a nice square one. Put take photo down here. Okay, and then I'm going to have some text fields for the title and subtitle. So let's drag those out. So here's text field. First time we've used that. But here we go. There's one there. Um, let's make it a little wider. Something like that. Let's copy and paste for title and subtitle. Let's get a label for each of these things. There's the subtitle label. 
And let's copy and paste under title label. And then let's line these things up, something like that. Uh, we line up the baselines probably of our, get that out of the way, let's line up the baselines here. Or the center is probably just as good. Um, so anyway, so there's our title, there's our subtitle. And now let's create a custom UI view controller subclasses so we can, subclass so we can wire all this uh, business up to something. So we can go here, new, file. And we're creating a new one. This is going to be a normal UI view controller. It's going to call, let's call it add photo view controller because that's what it does, right? It adds a photo to the database. So that's a good name for it. Um, we'll put it where all the rest of our controllers are. There it is. Okay. This is our new, we don't need any of this boilerplate that it puts in here. Get rid of that. Um, let's go ahead and set our identity of this thing to be this new add photo view controller. Um, let's wire up some outlets to point to some of these things. All right, so we need an outlet to both of these text fields, so let's do that. This is our title text field, and we'll wire this one up. This is our subtitle text field. And let's, like, the cancel button, let's wire that up. Cancel, none. Let's wire up the take photo, take photo, none, okay. So now you know I don't like those like that, so we'll do that. Um, let's also wire up this image view right here. Okay, I'm also gonna do something that I did in image view controller, which I always like to do when I have an image view like that, which is I'm going to have a non-atomic strong UI image star image. Okay, so I'm going to have a property called image, but I'm going to store it in the image view. Same exact thing we do uh, for view controller. So here I'm just going to have, oops, set image. Okay, and it's just going to set in the image view controller and return the image view controller. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to need to do some things when the image is set uh, in the future. So I'm just kind of getting ahead of myself and getting ready uh, for that. Does everyone understand what I'm doing there, though? Okay. Um, okay. So um, let's go ahead and um, put this on screen briefly uh, by creating a modal segue from here to here. And I just want to show you a little bit about these text fields. So I'm just going to have this guy right here go like this. And instead of push, I'm going to do modal. Okay? So that's going to put this thing on screen modally. This is a modal segue right here. Um, with this, for example, we could call it the add photo segue. Okay, I'll probably skip even checking that identifier. But anyway, let's go ahead and run. So we can get this thing on screen, and I can show you something about the text field. So here we go, here's our uh, camera, and when I click this, it comes up on screen modally. Now, one thing about modal, you better have a way to get rid of it. Okay, we haven't wired any of this up. This is, my app is done now. I can't get back, okay? So I have to either unwind, or I have to cancel myself, okay? But we're not doing that right now. What I'm doing now is I want to look at these text fields. So if I click here, title, okay, and I could type, start typing in a title here, and I'm like, okay, that's what I want the title to be. Oh, I can't, get, I can't get rid of this, okay? There's no way to get rid of this keyboard, okay? There's nowhere I can click. There's nothing I can do. This thing is all up, and my photo is underneath it. So I can't see my photo, okay? This is awful. So I really want to be able to dismiss this keyboard uh, when I hit return here. So we can do that using the UI text fields delegate. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, we're going to go here and I'm going to do something a little interesting we haven't done before, which is I'm going to wire up a delegate in the storyboard. Normally we would do this in code, like when the setter for that text field was called, we'd say self, you know, we'd say text field dot delegate equals self. But here I'm going to do it by control dragging from the text field down to my view controller. And when I do, you'll see that I can set its delegate, okay? So I'm setting the text field's delegate to be my view controller. I'll set the other one too. So both of these guys, if you right click on them, you'll see that their delegate is my add photo view controller. Now, I still have to, in my add photo view controller right here, um, I still have to say, oh yes, I'm a UI text field delegate, okay? Right? Now, again, all these 
uh, methods are optional, so it really wouldn't be that big a deal if I didn't. But still, just to be proper, I should do that. And I, now I can implement some of these um, ones. Like a good one here would be should, what's it called, text field should return. So here's some of the text field ones. These ones are return bool. So let's do checks field should return. Okay. And so if the text field asks me should I return, I'm going to say yes, you should return, meaning if you have target action that fires when you return, go ahead and do it. But I'm also going to say, Mr. Text Field, please resign first responder. In other words, stop using the keyboard. Okay? So just by putting this in here, now when we run, and bring this baby back up, and we click here, and we start typing, and we hit return, it leaves the text in there, even does its little uh, uh, fixing and the misspellings, um, and the keyboard goes away. Okay? And I can bring this one back and make this one go away. So it's a much nicer UI to be able to make that keyboard go away, especially if you have something underneath the keyboard and you don't scroll it up. Okay, So I just wanted to show you that just to show you how we can A, set the text delegate uh, in the storyboard, and B, how we could use a delegate method to do something valuable. Okay, So that's all I'm going to show you for text field. I think you can figure out the rest uh, on your own. All right, so now let's get back to the segueing. Okay? So we have this guy right here, and it segues to here. So we already set up this modal segue, um, but we don't actually prepare it, nor can we unwind from it. So we really haven't finished with the whole relationship between these two view controllers. So let's um, first look at the public API of this modal view controller to kind of understand how it's going to communicate. So I'm going to look at the public API of add photo view controller. And it really has two things. It has an input, which is uh, the photographer who is taking the photo. Okay. Now, hopefully we always pass in the user right, that special photographer. But this add photo view controller can be more generic than that and just say, hey, give me a photographer. I'll take a photo and add it to the database for that photographer. But we're going to have our map, uh, photos by photographer map view controller. If it's the user and that camera button gets pressed, we're going to pass in the user's one. So that's the in. Okay, So that import photographer. And we're also going to import photo while I'm here because this thing, this view controller, also has an output, which is uh, atomic strong, the photo that was added to the database. Oops, photo. Okay, so this is an add photo view controller. It adds a photo for that given photographer, and when it's done doing that, this will be set to the photo it added. So anyone who segues to it, when they unwind back, they can look and see what was the photo that was added. Does that make sense, what we're doing there? So we have to implement this API both on the way in and on the way out. So let's talk about on the way in first, because that's normal segueing that you're used to. We're just going to do this in our Photos by Photographer Map View Controller. And all we're going to do is prepare that segue. OK, before we do that, let's go ahead and import our Add Photo View Controller, because we're going to use it. We're going to prepare it. And so let's do that. And here's prepare for segue. This is a normal segue, just like any other segue. And I'm just going to prepare it. Let's say if the sender, or no, if the segues destination view controller is kind of class add photo view controller, then add photo view controller, add photo view controller equals. Add, yeah, you guys should not be using my bad style here, but that's demo naming right there. Um, Segway.destination view controller. Okay, so now I have the view controller I'm segueing to here in this modal segue. So I'm going to set its photographer that's taking the photo equal to self.photographer. Now, this is always going to be the user because the only time that little camera button is there is when it's the user. Okay? But to be a double safe here, maybe I would want to check and see it is user, right? If Dr. Photographer is user. Um, but I'm not going to be double safe because it's a demo. Okay? Um, so there, that's that segue. I'm still going to do this segue if the sender is an annotation. In other words, someone clicks on the pin. So I'll do that one too. I could probably put an else in here if I wanted to. Even else if. Something like that. Okay? Because obviously, 
going to be one or the other. I also probably could have checked my Segways identifier here to make sure it's add photo. I can do that if I want to. Uh, but anyway, hopefully this side of this Segway you totally understand, right? Okay, normal Segwaying. We're just doing it modally uh, rather than not. Okay, so now we've got to it. Now the hard part, unwinding. Okay, so now we want to hear about it when the thing is done. Okay, and I told you that that's done by implementing a special IB action, okay, method, and we can call it anything we want. And what is going to happen in this unwinding? Well, a photo is going to be added. So maybe I'll call this method added photo, okay, because that's what it does. And the real key is that the argument is a UI storyboard segue. Oops. Okay, so this method is the method that's going to get called when we unwind. All right. Now the very adding of this has caused Xcode to know about it, so that if we go back to our storyboard and wind up, you know, con control drag to hook up and unwind, it's going to know about it. So let's go do that. We're back in our uh, thing here now. Um, cancel. Let's talk about cancel brief briefly. I'm going to make the executive decision that cancel is just going to dismiss. It's not going to unwind. All right, and I already have a cancel method right here. I already wired it up for target action. So how do I do that? Self dot presenting view controller presenting dismiss yes, and this completion handler is called once the uh, view controller is fully dismissed. In other words, after its view did disappear is called. We don't need to do anything at that time. Um, some people think this this is more magic than it is. It's really just a simple way to, after this thing is gone, do something to clean up or something, but uh, we're not, we don't need to do that. So, um, so anyway, so that's it. So that's cancel. So in fact, if we run right now, and we bring our photos and we go up here, um, cancel will work. You see, it just dismisses it. And it doesn't unwind, it doesn't call that added photo. It just cancels it, gone, okay? Um, now done, this is the one we want to unwind. We want it to create this photo and then unwind back to this map view controller right here and call added photo. Okay, what's, what are we going to do when added photo is called? Well, um, let's see. Let's uh, do a couple of things. One, let's make sure that the source of this is an add photo view controller, which it should be because it's the only thing we know how to unwind for and also because who else would call added photo? But we'll check it anyway. And then we're going to do, I'm going to copy and paste this. So I don't have to type all that again. Okay, now I'm just going to change. But this is the source view controller instead of the destination view controller. Okay, so I got my APVC. Now I'm going to say, okay, well, what was the photo that was added? Well, it's the APVC's added photo. That's part of its public API, the out of its public API. So I'm grabbing that out, and I'm going to say, if we added a photo, then what might I want to do? I'm the map view control. I'm showing photos by a photographer. So I probably want to do, for example, map view add annotation, this added photo. In other words, add this photo to my map. I might also want to say self.map view show that annotation. Okay? Zoom, zoom in to that part of the world where the photo was taken. I might want to say, I probably want to say photos by photographer equals nil and have that recalculate because I've added a new photo for this photographer. So the next time someone asks me about that, it'll work. Otherwise, for instructional purposes here, I'm going to log and say um, add photo view controller did not, or I'll even say unexpectedly, did not add a photo. Okay, because if I'm getting unwound to, it should have added a photo. Okay, so if this is nil, then something's wrong. Okay, so but we're going to we're going to see that happen because we're going to try this uh, without adding the without the photo being added to the database and see what happens here. So everyone understands what happened, what's going on here, right? We're unwinding back to this guy. This guy is receiving the unwind and doing something with the photo that was added with the add photo. All right, so now let's go ahead and wire that up. So as I said, we're going to pick whatever UI in here is going to cause the unwind, which is the done button. I'm going to control drag to this green button, and when I let go, watch what happens. See how added photo is in the list? And every single IB action that had a UI storyboard segue as an argument would be listed here. 
Okay, but add a added photo, obviously the only one is the one we want, so I'm going to click that. So now I've created an unwind that will unwind back to this guy. And I told you that the only place you can really see this is in the document outline. You can see it right here. See, unwind segue from done to exit. Okay, and I can, this is a normal segue, so I could set its identifier, for example, to something like do add photo or something like that, because that's what this unwind segue does. It does the add photo. It's the done, basically. Okay, but I wouldn't even need to do that. So let's go, uh, well, I will need to do it eventually, but for this so far, I didn't. So let's go ahead and see what happens here when we run this. Okay, so I'm going to go here, I'm going to go here, and I'm going to hit done this time, and we'll watch it unwind. Okay, it unwound, right? It, dis it uh, dismissed it. Okay, and look down in my console down here. Uh, add photo view unexpectedly did not add a photo, which is exactly what we expect, right? It unwound over to here, did this, but it never added the photo, because I never take all the information here that's in my UI, like the title, the subtitle, the photo, I never put them into a photo and add it to the database. So it's right, it, this thing is properly uh, reporting here that it did not add a photo. So let's do that, how do we do that? This is where prepare for segue is so important for unwinds, okay? Because prepare for segue, since this unwind segue happens in this view controller, okay, unwinds over there, this guy gets to prepare. And what this guy wants to do when he prepares is create that photo. Make sense? So all we got to do to make that photo is implement prepare for segue here in this add view controller. So let's do that. Add view controller, let's put this right here. This is normal prepare for segue here. Uh, we need to figure out which segue it is. And so we, could, we, we really can't look at the destination view controller here, OK? Because add photo view controller is kind of like part of the view of that other view controller. So it really can't be looking, it can't know anything about the photos by photographer map view controller. But what we can do is look at the segues identifier. So if the seg segues identifier is what I said there, which was do add photo, right? That's what I set it to in the storyboard. And probably we want to have this be called something like unwind segue identifier, something like that. We'll put this up here, copy, pound sign to Fine, like that, okay? So I have a nice constant there. We're gonna need this constant in a second, as you'll see. Uh, so if this is the unwind, then we wanna create that photo. So what do we need to create the photo? Well, first thing I need is a managed object context, okay? I can't create a photo unless I have a handle on the database. But I do, because self.photographer taking the photo has a managed object context. So I'm going to put this photo in the same database that the photographer's in, which is exactly what I want, right? So that's good. So if that context is not nil, then we can create our photo. So photo star photo equals, and let's import photo. Okay, so how do we create a photo? NS entity description, insert new object for identity, photo. And the context is that context. All right, I've created a photo. Now I just need to set everything in the photo. So photo dot photo dot title equals self dot title text field dot text. Oops, get rid of these square brackets. All right, and photo dot subtitle equals self dot subtitle text field dot text. So here's how we are grabbing the text out of those text fields, just using just like a label, right? Just grabbing the text property, which is an NS string. Um, what else do we got to get out of this photo? Well, quite a few other things, actually. We got photo dot who took. Everyone know what that is? Right? Photographer taking the photo. That's who took this thing. How about photo dot latitude? Okay. Well, we don't have the latitude. We got to get that latitude. So to do that, I'm going to add some properties here. Okay, so I added these properties. One is to keep track of our location in a CL location. One is to keep track of the URL of our image. One is our thumbnail. And also, I'm going to uh, say add photo, added photo equals something. So I'm going to make this one read write, and I'm going to make this one read only over here so that this is truly an outgoing parameter. Okay, so I'll make it read write 
here internally. So I need to import core location, okay, because I'm using core location right here. Okay, and we're gonna have to set this location, which we'll do in a moment. But in the meantime, let's go here. This is going to be self.location.coordinate.latitude and photo.longitude equals self.location.coordinate.longitude. And then let's say photo.image URL equals self.image URL absolute string. And we're gonna have to implement this, okay? Because right now our image is just in that image view. We're gonna have to put it on disk and get a URL to it. So we'll have to implement that. And then we got photo.thumbnail URL equals, we'll do the same thing here, thumbnail absolute string. Okay, and then finally, we're gonna say self.added photo equals the photo. Oops. All right? So in the unwind, in preparing for the unwind, we've put that photo in the database. Now, there could be a problem here. What happens if the user hasn't taken a photo yet? Okay, they haven't hit take photo. The, I can't do this. Okay, a photo of blank photo makes no sense whatsoever. So this is a normal segue preparation. So I can also do bool should perform segue with identifier. Okay? So this is whether we should do the unwind at all when we click it. So again, I'm going to do the same if segue identifier is that unwind guy. And then I'm just going to check some things to make sure things are okay. Like if not self.image, then I'm going to complain. So let's say no photo taken. Oops. Okay. Or I might say uh, else if self.title text field uh, field dot text length not. So if we, I'll force a title here and I'll say self alert uh, title required. A little too many exclamation points there. Otherwise, we'll return yes. In both of these cases, we want to return no, that we should not segue. Okay? Now, before we go on and try all this segueing stuff, let's talk about this. Okay? See this little method alert, which I haven't defined yet? Let's go ahead and implement that. This is a good aside for us to talk about alert view here. So let's do void alert ns string message. Okay, what we want to do here is put up an alert that says whatever that message is. So how do we do that? UI alert view, alloc, init, this long thing. What's the title? Well, we're adding a photo, so we'll say the title of this alert. That's the little title at the top, not the message, but the title at the top. So add photo. The message is the message that we want to give right here. Uh, delegate, I'm going to make this one have no delegate. I'll show it with a delegate in a minute. Cancel button, there's no cancel, okay? And the only button is OK, okay? So I've created this alert view. Now I'm going to show it, okay? Do you understand that? So that's just showing. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Yep, what do we got here? Uh, oh, sorry, this is just the identifier, okay? Um, yeah. Yeah, what else do we got here? Uh, okay, this else return super should. Okay, that's if, if we don't, if it's not our identifier, some other one, then we'll do uh, super. So let's do that. All right, so we'll go to photos. We go here. Now let's try to unwind. No photo taken. So did our should perform? Put up an alert. No photo taken. See that? So that's good. Okay, so we're trying to unwind. So we're getting closer to unwinding. We still have to get an image and uh, we have to make sure we set our title. So we're getting closer. Um, I'm going to take another little aside to show you doing an alert with a delegate. What if I had something in my application which was a fatal error, fatal alert? Okay, so this is some alert that's so bad I got to cancel right away. Just do cancel. Okay, how would I implement that? Well, I would do the same alert that I'm doing here, okay? But instead of having the delegate be nil, I'm gonna have the delegate be self so that I can find out when the user clicks okay, and when they click okay, I'm gonna cancel. I'm gonna dismiss myself. 
So to do this, I need to be a UI alert view delegate. Oops. Okay. And then I'm going to implement the alert view. I'm going to do the one here. Dis you can see there's a few here. Did dismiss with button index. That's the one I'm going to do. And I only have this one button, so I don't even need to look at the button index. I know that in this case, I want to cancel. Okay. Now, I didn't set myself as the delegate for this one, so I'm not going to cancel for a normal alert, only for a fatal alert am I going to cancel. Now, what would be fatal? What kind of things would be fatal in this? Well, what if my device has no camera? Okay, that's fatal. It's a waste of time to have this thing up and my device has no camera. Or, since this photo mania is fundamentally locations of photos, what if I can't get the location? Okay, the user maybe doesn't allow me to get the location. So let's go ahead and put a method up here um, called can add photo. Let me import some stuff here. So this can add photo method is going to check some of these fatal errors, like do I have a camera available? I'm asking the UI image picker controller, is there a camera available? I'm also making sure I can get an image, which really usually don't have to check this. Mostly you're checking this to see if it'll do video. All cameras can do image, but I'll just to show you what it looks like to check it. And then I'm also going to check my location manager to make sure my authorization status is not restricted. So that means my authorization status is either you're authorized or denied. Now, why am I only checking restricted here? Because this is going to be a fatal error. Okay? It's only going to be fatal if the user can't control whether my app can find its location. All right? They can't go to settings and set it. So it's fatal. Later, I'll check to see if they've just denied it, and I'm going to suggest to them they go back to settings and undeny it, and then it'll work. So it's not a fatal error in that case. So that's the difference why we're doing restricted here. Okay? So if, any, if all this is true, then we're good to go. We can take a photo. Otherwise, we can't take a photo. So now, let's, in our view will appear, or view did appear, super, view did appear, I'm going to say, if self class can add photo, actually I'm going to say if not, if I can't add a photo, then I'm going to self fatal alert. Sorry, this device cannot add a photo. Notice I'm not saying anything in this fatal error like you, uh, you are not authorized to do, get your location because there's nothing they can do about it. Okay? If they have no camera or they can't do it, they can't go add a camera or you know, do something about their being restricted from doing a location. They can't do anything, so I'm not going to suggest they do anything. I'm just going to say, sorry, you can't do it. Okay? I could imagine maybe saying here, sorry, this device can add a photo because you have no camera. Okay? I definitely wouldn't want to say because you cannot get your location. Or if I do say that, I want to say contact your system administrator or something like that to get yourself there. It's, you know. But here I'm just going to say, sorry, you can't take a photo. And it's going to be fatal, so I'm going to immediately drop out of there. So let's take a look at that. All right, there's photos. And I'm going to bring this up. And sure enough, sorry, this device cannot add a photo. Why? Because it's the simulator. Okay? The simulator cannot add a photo. So it's properly telling me I can't add a photo. And if I click OK, cancel. Okay, so fatal error. Okay, so now we're going to continue. We're going to switch over and do it on a device where we actually can do this stuff. But to do that, uh, the next thing we want to do is the location manager. So I never showed you how to do the location stuff, and so this is a good example of how to show that. So I want to set this self.location to something, because right now it's going to be nil, right? Because I just created that property and I never set it. And then here I'm looking at it. So our latitude and longitude would be zero. So we're going to be somewhere out in the ocean somewhere west of Africa or something. Probably have pirates after us over there. So we don't want to do that. Uh, we want to set this self to location. So how are we going to do that? Well, to do that, I need a location manager. OK? So let's find a good place to put all this. Let's put it down here. OK? So I need a location manager. And I, for speed here, I have this to show you how to do that. So I'm just going to add this property. Right, CL location manager, location manager. Remember, this is the thing we ask to start giving us updates on the location. And then I'm going to lazily instantiate it. Here it is here, lazy instantiation. If we haven't created one, then I'm going to alloc init it. 
I'm going to set myself as the delegate. Obviously, warning, because I haven't said that I'm that kind of delegate yet. And then I'm going to set my accuracy to best. Why am I doing best? Because I want to know exactly where this photo was taken. And I'm modal anyway, so I'm only going to be on screen for a few moments. I'm not going to use up the whole battery, just find out where I am. And then here we set the location manager. And then here's the delegate method I'm going to use. Okay, I'm the delegate, so I'm going to get a delegate method. It's called location manager did update locations. It gives me an array of all the locations it's found since the last time it called this message, this method. And I'm just going to grab the last one. The last one is always the most current one, the most up to date, the most accurate. Uh, that's the one you always want there. Okay, if you're just trying to get your current location. And I'm just going to put that in self dot location so that when I pop it in here. It'll be the right location. Okay. Now, we're not done here because this location manager, we have to start it up. Okay. Remember, just because you create a location manager, and let me go ahead and do this delegate thing first, make myself be a CL location manager delegate. Um, I need to start it up. And where am I going to start it up? I'm going to start it up in view did appear. Okay. So I'm going to say, Else, okay, this is I can't add a photo. So else, I'm going to say self dot location manager. That's going to lazily instantiate it. Start updating location, and that's going to start sending me those delegate methods of my location. All right, it's probably going to send me one right away that's pretty inaccurate, like Wi-Fi based or something. Then it'll probably send me another one with GPS if I'm outside or I, you know, can see the satellite. So it might send me more than one. That's okay. I want it to keep sending me more and more accurate ones as time goes on. If you do this, you almost always in view will disappear. Want to turn this back off. Now it's not that huge a deal here because um, this thing is presented modally. Uh, whoops, stop updating location. This is presented modally, and so when this thing unwinds, it's going to get released from the heap. And when it gets released from the heap, this location manager is going to get released, and it's going to stop updating. Okay, so it's really not that big a deal. But if for some reason we ever figured out how to make this thing not be modal, put it up in a non-modal way, we just want to be in the good habit of every time we turn this thing on, turn it off somewhere, even if it's you know turns it off right before it gets thrown out of the heap. Still, turn it off. Okay. Using location updates is expensive. It's fine to run while this thing is up, but we want to make sure we turn it off. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and uh, let's see what else can we do here. Um, yeah, let's let's go ahead and throw these uh, two methods into image URL and thumbnail URL. So all I need to do here with the image URL and thumbnail URL is I'm just going to take the image that's in my image view. Put it on disk and return the URL. Okay. Where am I going to put it on disk? I'm just going to put it in a randomly named file. Okay. I'm just going to pick a name. I'm going to pick the name is going to be the number of seconds since some reference date in 2001 or something like that. Okay. That's pretty unique. It's not likely. I mean, unless somehow you did two different devices identically and this was over iCloud, you could conceivably get a conflict conflict there. But um, we're just going to do that. Probably better ways. But we're going to create both the image URL and the thumbnail URL. Let's put those down here. Um, so the image URL, NS URL, image URL looks like this. Oops. Okay, so this is the getter for that method. So I'm going to lazily create that file. As soon as someone wants the URL for it, I'm going to go create the file. Okay, so if not image URL, in other words, I'm going to lazily instantiate it. And we have an image. Okay, because we can't create the file if we don't have an image, but if we do have the image, then we'll do it. Um, let's do this. Let's say nsurl uh, URL equals self uh, unique document URL. Okay, so this is just going to be a unique URL in my documents directory. I have that one here for you. You can look at it at your leisure. It just does, you know how to do all these things already, so it's no use going over them again. So I got this unique URL. Uh, if that was successful, then I'm going to get the image data out of my image view. And I'm going to do that, do this kind of cool function, UI image JPEG representation. Okay? It will take a UI image and give you back an NS data with a JPEG of that thing. Pretty cool, huh? Not all images can do this, but 
you know, the kind of images that we load from the camera can, for example. So this would be self.image. And then this is how much you want to compress it. And I'm going to pr compress it as little as possible, OK? Because I want the image to be as close to what you took with the camera as possible. I don't want any compression artifacts or any of that stuff, because this is the actual image you took. So now that I have this, I'm going to say, if I'm able to write this thing out, write to URL. So write to URL is an NSData method. And I'm going to specify that URL. And yes, I'm going to do it atomically, which means it's going to write it to a temporary file, delete any existing one, move it over in a one atomic transaction. So if the phone crashes in the middle, you won't get, you'll still have an old file if it were still there. Um, if it successfully does that, then now this is the image URL. Remember, this is the getter for image URL. So I'm setting that. And now we can return our image URL. Now, one thing is, every time you ask for the image URL, I'm writing it out to disk. Um, well, not every time, but the first time you ask for it. I better be careful here. If someone changes the image, I'm going to have to regenerate this URL. I also want to delete that file off of disk. So here I'm going to say, if anyone sets the image to something do, I'm going to say NS file manager, default manager, remove item at URL, our image URL. Notice I'm not calling self.image URL here because that would create the file. <laughs> okay. So this is a little bit weird. I told you never use uh, underbar in anything but a setter or a getter. I'm violating that, but it's you know kind of for performance reasons here. And we don't care if there's an er error. If it couldn't delete it, it couldn't delete it. And also, I'm going to set my image URL to nil so that the next time someone asks, because I have a new image, the next time someone asks, it'll regenerate. Okay. So I'm going to do exact same thing for the thumbnail. Okay. I uh, created this file here. I'm going to drag in a little category that I created uh, using uh, some of the code from last Friday's section and also some little code that I wrote. So here it is right here. Whoops. Where's this? Put it in here. Whoops. Let's go here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to put this right here. This code is quite simple. It just has two methods. One takes the image and gets a new image by resizing it. That's what we want for a thumbnail. And this one applies a filter based on what we saw at Friday's section. So if you missed Friday's section, you won't understand this code. But if you're there, you will. And this is pretty straightforward code using draw and rect and this nice graphics begin image context with options. So you can look at that um, offline as well. And so now let's go back here. And now that I have that, let uh, where was I find this thing? It's way down here. Here it is. So we got the thumbnail. So the thumbnail it uses the same URL as the image, but adds dot thumbnail to it, and then scales it, and then does exactly the same thing. So now our thumbnail. So we want to do the same thing here for the thumbnail. We better remove our thumbnail file, and we want to self dot thumbnail. That's not strictly necessary, but we'll do it. Okay. So now that we have thumbnail URL and image URL, this photo creation up here, we'll be able to fully create the photo. Now, we don't have the camera, but I want to end this thing by showing you this working so far. So I'm going to drag an image, a little flower. This is the flower we saw earlier in the quarter. Um, and I'm going to make this little flower be our photo. Okay, So I'm just going to do that right here in view did load of this guy. View did load. Oops. Super viewed did load, and I'm going to say self.image equals UI image, image named flower.jpg. Um, this is an opportunity to show you another cool thing that we ju I just did, which you see I dragged a file right into my top level of Photomania, and then I can access it directly using something like image named. So you don't actually have to put things in that assets. You can put them right in the top level if you want. Um, and access them that way. All right, so hopefully, oops, this is not going to work because we need to be on a real device. There we go. I've got this iPad in iPhone simulation mode here. All right, so we'll go to my photos. Here's all showing all my photos. I don't have any yet. We'll press the little camera. Here's our photo that we took with our camera. We'll do that on Wednesday. So now, for now, we got photo. And um, we could actually hit done here. Watch what happens if we hit done. It says title required. Remember, we had that should perform. So that's good. It requires that. So we'll call this flower. 
and then have a little subtitle. Pretty. Okay. Uh, so we're ready to go. Now we hit done. It unwinds. It creates it. It found our location. If we click on it, we see it got a thumbnail. We can click to see the photo. Here's our photo, etc. Okay. Got all that? Okay. So on Wednesday, we will continue by actually getting the photo in here. I'll also show you an action sheet. We'll use that filtering thing um, to put an action sheet up that filters our photo. Okay? If you have questions, I'm here. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.